It's Sunday, July 24th. Um, my children visited yesterday. One of my sons um, said a name that's been friends with Lewis since my childhood or since he was a teenager. Um, there's a lot of brothers in the family. Um, they used to invite and have like a family get together once a year out in Smithtown that I was invited to. Uh, again, I'm an only child, so whatever on that. Um, but my sons said that they're the ones in charge of something to do with Marvel or DC Comics or something like that. And I'm like, how the heck do you know that? Like, where'd you hear that from? Like, I haven't heard that. Then I asked Ben about a duff field of science, if he's ever heard that. He said, no. I said, well, that was the first elementary school you ever went to. So that's kind of an important detail. Um, anyhow, so here we are in um, this morning, CBS this morning. Oh, see the BS, puts up something about public health systems, some paradigm full of triangles. Um, and I'm looking at it, federal agency at the top, then some governmental agency under federal. Um, then they have a whole bunch of different county level things. And I'm thinking to myself at this point, uh, I'm going to... I purposely did it where this triangle comes out. I'm going to let it play through and then I'll go back to the beginning because there's somebody working at something called a WHO World Health Organization, but again, he's not White House. So I don't know how that got started. Um, I don't know why. I mean, he could not contribute blood to me. He would wind up killing me or any kind of organs. So he has no positive health contribution to my person. And at the moment, he's actually putting my health further in risk. Um, because while I'm held in this whatever, um, inside this USA territory with a lot of things that are going unaddressed and growing more scarily, um, I've suffered from chronic anemia. It was acute anemia. But then it, nobody ever fixed it, so it became chronic anemia. And as of late, I've had extreme acute anemia, sending me into the hospital needing blood transfusions, which is indicative of there is something majorly wrong in the local area that is affecting my health, and it's going unaddressed with these people at the helm of something called a World Health Organization and a CDC. And I'm not quite clear how they were invited in to a health system that I'm trapped within. It's my health. It's going unacknowledged. They're keeping me at, at this point, last time I checked, it was an 8.6. But 11.6 is what a healthy, normal adult has. They're keeping me just underneath that at an 8.6. So I'm dragging. My metabolism isn't working properly. And it is really hard to get up every day and to survive. Just to survive. But I don't see anybody making any efforts whatsoever in order to help that situation. In fact, I see them making more accommodations for the problems and more room for the problems to grow. The structure of the public health system is extremely complex. Local and state departments, educational institutions, private industry, and at the top, government. So here we are. Federal agencies at the top, state and tribal, government, clinical care and delivery, then media, what is that one, community-based organizations, private, nonprofit, educational institutions, private industry. So um, in this mix, I've been to Nassau Community College, 
I've learned from the Princeton texts of medical acceptable whatever practices through that county level education system. Um, and while I was there, it was filled up with everything I'm not. Again, going through my daily effects, they, I just ignore the existence of all humans because they, they are such a problem in this area. So I smile, I stay quiet, I keep to myself and that's it. But again, they keep surrounding me everywhere I go throughout my life frame, except while I was in elementary school in the correct element to a degree. They keep surrounding me with things that could kill me. If I get put into, I need a blood transfusion, not a single one in the room would have been, or the majority of the room would not have been able to like to save me. So then why are they constantly crowding around me and allowed to get that close to me? I'm just curious. It's a real problem. Government agencies like the Department of Health and Human Services, the National Institutes of Health, the CDC, and the FDA. No one person runs the whole system, and not every branch has the resources it needs. Why in the world would anybody still need to use a fax? Well, basically, it's about the doctor's offices. They don't all have secure forms of transferring information about you as a patient. Thank you, uh, Kay Rivers. The technology to securely share health information electronically has existed for decades. Why would I want to share my personal health situation and cellular representation with the blood types that could kill me just for being around me if I need a, another blood transfusion. Why would I ever agree to that? I wouldn't. So why does, why is there a system outside of my control that exists where they're passing information that could lead to targeted diseases being created by outside countrymen that are now living inside some state that I can't get a, I can't get a single representative to acknowledge that it's a problem at this severe depth and it puts my life in direct harm's way at what point does that get rectified yet at the height of the pandemic Doctors were faxing orders for COVID tests to this machine. We need a healthcare information exchange that is just at our fingertips, that the health departments and uh, the hospitals and the primary care physicians can all share information so quickly and easily. But that's not what we have. Instead, there's a patchwork of reporting systems across the country that don't effectively talk with each other critical during the early stages of outbreaks like COVID and monkeypox. And Dr. Walensky says there are more challenges. Does the CDC have the authority to demand that public health agencies around the country send? I know for a fact by looking that she's not NEG. She's something else. So again, why in this state, with my health in an altered, dangerous state, which was not just an, it was an extreme acute event, but it's been chronic for a while without a single one in the health system actually rectifying it and keeping me at a deetered, a, a titered 8.6. in varying amounts when I need 11.6 to feel healthy and well. And why, what in the environment is affecting my bone marrow from being able to produce my own red blood cells correctly? So I don't need this extreme acute in like transfusion. But see, I can't even get a doctor to help me out with that because they're so busy with the POS that shouldn't even be in existence 
within the system. The NEG and the POS should not even have a same shared system. Why is it so difficult to get to an NEG doctor? And information to it? We do not. Reporting cases from around the country is voluntary. Do the data systems exist right now to adequately collect all the information needed? They don't. We've made a lot of progress during COVID, but we still have a lot of work to do. Would really be helpful if we had the capacity, the data systems, the workforce, the laboratory systems in place, the public health infrastructure truly in place so that we could deliver um, health to all of America. Why don't we? I don't want her having any NEG information. Just don't. There's no need for a POS to have an NEG. There's a hybrid situation, like my son, if I'm doing Hera Zeus work for the moment, he has a hybrid situation. He tests POS, but his mRNA is all NEG. So he is like a super hybrid of importance. But other than that, if they lack mRNA and the DNA, why is there any shared anything in the system? Don't we have those systems in place right now? There has been a chronic decades long underfunding of a public health infrastructure in America. And Michelle Williams says the public. Uh, could that have anything to do with the changing face of America at the moment? I mean, it doesn't even look like the America from 18th or early 19th century any longer. It now looks like some, I don't know, travel and leisure hospitality, like other island kids moving mainland for I don't know what reason, and nobody like escorting them back and putting up permanent blocks. Public health system faces a brain drain. We know that burnout is real and it is pervasive. When was your last vacation? Um, There's something called Doctors Without Borders. That's a one-way ticket. Why is there not a Doctors With Borders program where, like, they cut off the POS without an NEG marker from even entering a healthcare system, public or private? I mean, they should not be nesting or gardening within the same area. It puts, it actually puts my health at risk. Um, I haven't had a vacation. Yeah. Well, your calendar is already crazy. It's estimated that since 2008, at least 38,000 state and local public health jobs have disappeared. The collision of public health and politics hasn't helped. Lots of hate mail, lots of hate email. And in Oklahoma City, Patrick McGough is feeling the heat. Texts that were awful, all kinds of stuff. So when people question your motives, what does that feel like? So I see that I have staff on the front lines giving everything they have, their family time, their own health, their own finances, and then to be attacked and called all kinds of things. It didn't just happen because the pandemic arrived. Something else happened. Something caused people to lose faith. And it's to the pub. Oh, let's see. When the White House no longer looks like the historic white professional behind the desk, yeah, people tend to lose faith. And like, that's worldwide. I mean, stronger enemies from elsewhere that run dynasties for centuries, look at you like you're weak for not being able to maintain a simple profile behind a desk. Public's demise, it may do away with public health. Despite these challenges, what Michelle Williams is seeing at Harvard makes her optimistic. What's It frightens me completely. I'll pause it at the desk that they labeled Harvard I mean, it's like immigrant status. Do they have any, like, traditional big five? Like, the great migration kids? are? Do they accept any applications from them? Because it looks like they go into, like, southeast somewhere else, far east, and only take 
like problematic POS with no MRA like signatures even close to an NEG. So I'm just curious. From Civilization Zero at the moment, even though I can get myself between a Civilization 3, 2, and 1 at times, I've been known to whatever. What's happening with applications to your public health school? We have a year over year, 50% in. Now look at this because without even having to run blood tests, I am like 99.9% .9 sure there is no shared mRNA within NEG as these could all be considered some POS with unknown titered problem in proteins that will never match and could further harm a recipient. I mean, again, any of the big five being Ireland, Italy, uh, Sweden, or no, it was Ireland, Sweden, Italy was the third, European Jewish was the fourth, and French was in there somewhere. Just curious. I think it was French. I don't know. I don't remember what the fifth one was at the moment. But it's just really concerning that this is what's gra graduating Harvard at the moment. What is the future going to look like for the mRNA NEGs that are already under attack just by their being here in some kind of a healthcare system, having some kind of, I don't know, laurel, laurelette possibility, not that I would grant it, but... increase in our applications. How do you explain I, that? They are running towards the opportunity to have an impact in this world. And I am inspired by that because... Because she's not mRNA NEG and she's some form of DNA POS that can kill the mRNA NEGs for certain. So, of course, she's going to be positive about everything being done incorrectly. But here we are at a losing battle is what it feels like for several decades without any reinforcements propping up what needs to be done and performing everything wrong. I think they even made a mention in Westworld about it this week. We are going to prevail. It will take more time, but we are going to prevail. Here's the Westworld version. <clears throat> the parasite worked on adults initially, but there was always some resistance. At a certain age, your brain would become more rigid difficult to change. Fortunately, that's not the case with children. Your children are so fucking good at taking orders. <laughs> with them, it was seamless. The parasite growing in perfect symbiosis with their minds. It took a generation for those children to mature, for me to gain complete control over your world. Just curious, like in real world in New York, is that like the Gail King method? I'm just putting like real names to real mentions of now it's plastered all over the television. It's a real problem. I mean, I stopped watching television. My children last night made my son said that he's going to stop watching television completely because it's become so difficult. And as a Telestar kid, that's a real scary whatever. But if message doesn't get through to the original Telestars at Bell and the Atlantic 
as to what's going on right now and who's being held against their whatever in lowered health status, which has now become chronically a problem. Just putting faces in the movies, mixing up like Hollywood casts. I mean, trying to make it like it's no big thing, even though to some of us, it's the most revolting thing ever. I met the guy once who was in charge of the ugly. He literally, that's what he said that his career was. He says, I'm the man who's in charge of everything ugly in the world. I was like, wow, that's interesting. I was like, I don't know how to respond to that. What do you mean by ugly? And then that was it. One of those times in hole in space where I just disappear in a car with whatever. I think that was the trip down to Florida. However, I got there before I got there, after I got there and got moved, whatever. And however that works. Um... And being able to find a civilization three, two, one, or one, two, three, when I've been spent most of my life amongst the gauche in the civilization zero, where I'm actively trying to get out of and to some semblance of my youth that actually cares about one another, or at least gives the appearance of such to make one healthy and so they can go on their way um it's star 1978 star 8378 nicole ketters it's earth solar system milky way universe galaxy is broken it's bayside station bayside new york 1361 and it's july 24th 2022 oh also one other thing there's on the television uh today let's go back to the real news with this person who has a backdrop that says who but He's not part of the who's who. So that's really confusing how he got that monogram and those three letters behind him when it doesn't, when he's not White House. So I like, again, I don't, it's a real problem. So this is what the real story looks like today from New York with, I don't know how the person at the health desk got chosen or is allowed to even communicate to New York I don't know how these people get put in place or in charge, but it seems to have a real big effect and problem on a multifaceted, looks like strategic attack campaign from multiple angles while trying to dance around on the television as if nothing's wrong. Even though this introduction of like, Talks are opening up in New York City, just as the disease was declared a global emergency by the World Health Organization. I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. The but he's not part of the Great Migration. He's not one of the original country states or na uh, the One Nation of what was originally allowed in here only a few, I mean, maybe a century ago, a few decades ago. Yeah, a few decades ago. So that gets confusing as to how did that so abruptly change and what's going on in outside world that's affecting inside world with nobody actually saying how or why any of these people were appointed and by whom. The announcement came despite a lack of consensus among the organization's panel of advisors. Of the 16,000 worldwide cases, New York City has the largest number of any U.S. city with 839 reported infections. Researchers believe the actual number... Now, this is interesting because... 
I don't even... I don't even know what kind of classification of cell that is. Again, I don't have my medical micro books because of Linda's whatever, but that's a really scary cell, but it's not a erythrocyte and it's not a leukocyte. It's some um, periflagellate that looks like it has motility. But again, they're saying it's monkeypox. I don't even know if that's accurate because they have also represented monkeypox as other cellula cellular um, representations, which I have no way of confirming that either. But there's like three different choices of cells that don't look erythrocyte or uh, leukocytes or any of the versions of leukocytes, since that's an umbrella term and there are specifics underneath that. It's higher. I don't know, I'm just getting it to protect myself. Bajana Boss feels lucky to have booked an appointment as local officials press the federal government to send more doses. The city opened up 17,000 slots Friday at 6 p.m. I don't understand how any of this, I mean, to control the population and the bodies that enter the United States of America would be like the first level of like security, I would think. How they have so many people moving, studying, moving, traveling. They just have opened it up to all sorts of gauche. And now it's just a nightmare in I mean, nobody wants monkey pox. No, it's just like small pox or a chicken pox. I mean, it's it's a variant. It's it's a labeled whatever. It's a frightening thought, but why would anyone allow this possibility to even arise and accept travelers from known destinations? that take live viruses in, in not as stringent healthcare systems, and then they hop on a flight, or they get airbussed in, not quite sure, and they just enter the public in some capacity, and then hide in plain sight. This morning, they're showing, the first thing they showed was a rash over this woman's arm. I'm walking this morning on Bell Boulevard and there was an Asian woman who walked right past me and on her triceps, it was all like raw and like scratched with a huge breakout of exactly what it looks like on the television this morning on my public street. And I'm like, how do you prevent this when it's just, Doctors with no borders, apparently. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxies, Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, Woman 361.